Welcome to the Red VTV show, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. This is the show that sometimes leads with the chin and sometimes gets it wrong. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? We've led with the chin enough over the years that you'll take the odd punch now and again. Yeah, you've got to. You've got to roll with them. Um, you've got to own when you're when you're wrong. Um, and be smug when you're right. <laughs> yeah, which yeah, it, it, it's more, it has been more often than not. I see. Uh, obviously, uh, the tweet about uh, before getting to the big clubs, we've got to beat the likes of Leeds and Wire first. Uh, yeah, the amount of Wire fans who retweeted it. Uh, and we're like, oh, you better delete this. And I'm like, no. Own yeah. your tweet. If you tweet something yeah. and it goes drastically wrong, you stick with it. Well, you know what? It's like the one that, uh, that Sam Tompkins uh, retweeted. Listen, yeah. you, you've got to you, you've got to go with it. And you know what? Notoriety. It gets told you it'd be a good week for views on the uh, instant fan reaction. Yeah. So, Kev, no more tweets like that for me. <laughs> <Please. Okay. laughs> right, I'm glad we can laugh about something because that was yeah. terrible at the weekend. Abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. There's, there is absolutely no sugarcoating it, Kev. Um, worst performance in many, many years. Um, poor across the board in everything that we did. On the field, um, and you know what? If you support a team in more than one sport, like me, that wasn't even the worst performance of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, I think so I'm not sure is it a good thing. Uh, um, right, um, yeah, I, I think uh, it, Dan Anders, one of our mates, actually uh, tweeted me and just quoted something I said in the instant uh, reaction, which was a whole symphony of absolute terrible, <laughs> a perfect summary, it stuck. So, you know, when you think, yeah. Even it just was, of terrible. Yeah, it was just, it just as you say, across the board, anything that could go wrong, did go wrong. Um, and we were out game managed, we were out enthused, out performed. <sighs> You don't. I don't mind losing. Listen, I don't like it, but I don't mind losing as long as it's you can see the the what they're trying to do. I think we mentioned it in in the instant reaction. We it, there were times when it was just didn't look like a Saints team. Yeah. Um, well, oh, if if anybody watched the record of the press conference that went out, he was fuming. Um, oh yeah. He basically said, "This isn't what Saints do. This isn't our DNA. This isn't what we practiced in training." What I would say to that is, it's not enough to just roll on. I think changes need to be made. And and yeah. if players aren't doing what they're being told to do in training or being sent out there to do, um, changes need to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know we'll, we'll get on to the squad and we'll get on to the like talking about what's what's been changed for this week or, or what hasn't been changed for this week. Um, but yeah, the, hopefully the messages that he's given them over the past couple of days, the soul searching that they'll have done, will will be taken on board again. I think this is we are raking over what we've said in the instant reaction, but you've got to take your medicine from it. You've got to take your lessons from it. And eventually, well, very quickly, you've got to learn them lessons. You've got to learn just just how to do better in big games like that when you've got a team who are coming at you like Warrington did. That said, I don't think you've got the squad to do wholesale changes. Um, I've seen people on social media, and listen, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Um, doesn't, mean, doesn't mean you're right with your opinion. Neither... Does us giving our opinion mean that we're right either? Um, there's going to be people who vehemently, is that a word? Vehemently uh, yeah. disagree with what we say here. Personally, I am still 110% behind Well, I was the coach. Um, I think some of the problems we've got, which we'll go into because we're going to put the squad up in a minute, 
Um, I just years in the making. Um, and it's going to take time to sort out. I don't see how changing the coach is going to fix those issues. I think you've got to give him time. I personally think it's going to take two or three years to turn the squad over and, and do what needs to be done with it. Um, but should we get on to it, Kev? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so looking back and looking forward this week on Red V. Right, the squad. The first question I'm going to say to you, Kev, is people are obviously complaining about our lack of pace in the la uh, the back line at times, uh, players in key positions, they're getting older. But does it come from the dynasty that we had where you've won four on the bounce? It's very, very hard to be turning those players over and moving players on and replacing them when you are winning every year. Um, but there does naturally come a time where your squad does age a little bit and you, it just isn't your time anymore. Um, we did say it when we were winning, didn't we, that this won't last forever. There will be a time where we can come good um, and you, you, you have to enjoy the good times while you can. So are we suffering a little bit now from an aging squad which hasn't been turned over? Possibly so, um, but as you say, because because you're winning things, you don't dismantle squads. Or, or you don't in rugby league anyway. I know in other sports, like I always think back to Man United, and you never win anything with kids. Um, and they took out three big players, brought a load of kids in, and it refreshed them. It doesn't quite work like that in in rugby league for me. Um, and these players earn the right to, to be given contracts because they're winning trophies. But there does come a point where you've got to start adding to that squad and taking away players. And this is probably just it. As you say, sport's cyclical. So while we went and won four in a row and were a Sam Tompkins try away from going to another grand final, and weren't that far away the year before we, we started on our great run. Um, it probably just is the case of this is coming to the end of its life as as the nucleus of the squad that we've got. I think equally, if, if you had turned over some of those players over the last few years and moved people on for, I don't know what reason you would have, because I, I look at it and think, will, would you have got rid of Tom Mickinson three years ago? No. Hairspell? No. no. Lomax, no. Dodd, no. Um, because he was up and coming. Walmsley, no. You had Roby there, no. You'd argue you, you, he went when he needed to uh, and finished when he needed to. Lees, no. Matautia, no. Bachelor, no. Morgan Knowles, no. James Bell, no. Curtis Sirenden, no. Wingfield, no. Um, And if you do move those players on any earlier, you don't potentially have that success that you had. Yeah, that's uh, and that's it's a good way of looking at it without having the the kind of just quick judgment. It's when you have a look through, you think, well, who would you have got rid of? Now there might be players that you think, well, we probably could have brought someone in, but you think of the number five before John Bennison, and who was it? Someone with pace, Regan Grace. So we didn't want to lose him. He's obviously gone to rugby uni. I think he's is he signed a deal with Bath now as well. Yeah, I think he had offers from league and then he stayed in union. Yeah. And he stayed in union. So that's possibly the position where you think, yeah, we we've lost an absolute bag full of pace there, and not only pace but Super League experience. Just someone who knew how to finish, knew when he got a, a little bit of space, he was off, he was gone. And you look at say like his positioning. For the, uh, I was thinking of the uh, intercept try against Hull, um, when he wasn't even in the frame. When he uh, and then he intercepts the ball, goes the length and settles Saints' nerves down. Um, so that's possibly like that's that's one of the big turnovers that we've had, and we probably not, not well, not probably we've not really replaced that pace and that out and out winger in the squad, have we? We had the discussion the other day about. Well, who would you have liked to? Who, who could we have brought in instead? Um, like Joe Bear just would have been a, an half decent option. 
But he didn't become available until after our squad was set for 2024. There was no potential room there. Um, how, how we, I, I'm going to discuss Wonga Blake. Um, he's obviously coming for a lot of criticism in recent weeks. Um, and I know I wasn't convinced at the start of the year, and I think I, did, I said we needed to give it a little bit of time. But we're now eight. Nine, well, we've played nine games this season. Um, we're nearly a third of the year done. I'm still not convinced. I don't think he's given us what we need on the field. But hindsight, hindsight is a wonderful thing. When we were in the market for a centre, if you go back and look at the comments from Saints fans, they were crying for Wonga Blake. When yeah. Wonga Blake was signed, everybody was saying, what a great signing. Signings don't always work out. Um, and I'm not entirely convinced whether we were all in on him in the first place, hence a 12-month deal um, as a club. I don't know. But at this moment in time, would you be keeping him on next year based on what you've seen so far? No. Uh, I, we need to see more from him. I think uh, I always say this to you when we chat about him, that a lot of overseas imports don't necessarily hit the ground running and you want to give him time because he's only on that 12-month deal. If he's looking for an NRL contract, he's so far in his sales career not gone the right way about it. I, I, uh, I don't I don't think he's NRL quality. I, I, you can see him playing either for the likes of Cass next year or going home and playing in the Queensland Cup. Well, yeah, but if, if, if his aim is to go back to the NRL though and wants a contract, then we need to see more from him. We need to see him at his NRL best. And Do, it, it we, might help when the, when the, when it all when the pitches dry up, but it, it needs to be. As I, I keep saying this, I just want to see the full effort from him. I've seen a bit in attack at the weekend. There was a one-off low where he, he set um, John Benison away, um, but in defence, I'm sorry, it, the the effort's just not good enough. Um, I don't know whether it's the technique or allowing the man to go on the outside of him. It seemed at times then. Trying to grab at him, not for me. Um, so yeah, can I, just, don't can, can, can I just can I just come back to, to that one? I got I got accused, um, I don't know if it, I think it was on Twitter, of having to go at T Ritson because I said that we've seen that technique before um with T Ritson. And somebody said oh, having to go at the T Ritson again. No, no, not having to go at T Ritson at all. It's more of a slight and I should have said that it should have articulated better. It's more of a slice at Wonga Blake, thinking if he's in that position, he's, a, he's an NRL player who's played 150 times. I'm not going all in on him here, but I'm just thinking if, if he's in that kind of position, compared to a lad who's played 14 times in Super League, what's going wrong with his positioning? So just clarifying, it's more of a slight on, on Wonga in his defence than me saying it's a go at T. I'm saying T is raw. We said this in his um his pre-season um profile that they can get it's a fact that T Ritson has used his pace to get him out of uh issue. It's a fact that players have gone past him and he's managed to get hold of him just as he gone past him. But I'd expect an NRL import not to be doing that on as many occasions as we've seen. Maybe because we haven't needed to over the last few years, because obviously you've got Wellsby, Makinson, um, Percival, homegrown. Have we struggled to recruit outside backs from externally over the last few years? Because we haven't really needed to. And um, like we've signed Wonga, it's not going right at the moment. We've brought T Ritson in. We've extended him for two years to the end of 2025. But whatever's happening in, in training. And whatever fans say, just because he's fast and they've seen him playing, running really quick for Barrow, he's not done anything in a Saints year to say he deserves a jersey. Um, it, I, I haven't got the graphic this week where players get better the longer than on the squad. But he's not even in the 21 this week. Yeah, You I could think argue that he's not showing enough to make the squad or to make the team. Or there is an argument that it's, an, it's, it's a bad sign. 
I, I think that the squad this week, and I know we'll get on to it in a bit, the squad this week shows that as things stand, and this is this is Rafa Benitez style fact, as things stand, Ritson is behind making some Benison and Blake in the pecking order for wingers, because otherwise he'd be in that squad. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if a globe move would be good for T to get him the match sharpness, if he can get a couple of weeks somewhere. And I'm not talking championship, I'm talking Super League. If there's somewhere that needs a winger, and he can go out there, fantastic. That would be great for him. Um, and I also think that the the hype and the pressure put on him by fans, building him up and building him up is really unfair on him. I want to see T. Ritson get his chance this season. We keep we are consistent saying he will get his chance. I want to see him get his chance. I want to see him take his chance. There isn't one player on that list that I want to see fail for saying it's not one. But I think we've seen him for 14 games at Super League level and the hype around him is completely unfair. It creates a pressure. And when he does get his chance, the expectation level feels like, from the comments we get on social media, it feels like it's going to be absolutely immense. And what happens if he gets two games in a row, and I don't want to, I'm not scapegoating John Benison here. He gets two games in a row where, an almost nothing clearing kick he knocks on and a team end up scoring off the back of it and end up winning the game. And then the game later, he's taking it in the third run when you're on a tough set, trying to take the ball out, takes his eye off the ball, knocks on. Are people then going to be calling him for him to be taken out and John Benison to come in? And I feel like this, this expectation on him is just so unfair to him. I think if, if he can just concentrate on his game, and concentrate on learning. He's only 18 months into the professional game. If he can concentrate on that and not have all this noise around him, when he gets his chance, which I'm still convinced is going to come, he'll be all the better for it. Listening to you there and then thinking about what I said, is it a bad sign? I'll go. We'll go back to the salary cap. We don't know what he's being paid. He might yeah. be on, do you know what? We're giving you... 35, 40 grand a year to be fourth choice winger. He might that might be his role in the squad. Whereas our fans are thinking he's been signed to be playing every week. Well, look at the squad numbers. Yeah. I think that's that's usually a, a, a big indicator again in rugby. Unless you've got someone like Sam Tompkins always wore um, 29, didn't he, down at, at Catalan. You might have a player who, who holds on to a number um and doesn't really want to change. As he goes through, you might like say Moses might be quite happy in 14 for the rest of his Saints career. Don't know, he might want seven, he might want nine, he might want one. Who knows? He might not care. But yeah, it's it is usually a, a good indicator. And we said about T Ritson as well. Again, go back to his preview. You said you thought they would start the first 10 games. I agreed that you know what? That's not a bad idea to get him in there without the fear of being dropped for his first mistake, which then takes me back to all this discourse about who should be on that wing. Should it be Benison? Should it be T. Ritten? Now, I saw another comment that says I'm, I'm Benison's biggest advocate over the past couple of um, weeks. Well, mainly for backing him when he'd done nothing. I, I take it it's for nothing wrong. He'd done nothing that was worth dropping him for. The, 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 Leeds, the Leeds Cup game at Headingley, Kev where he was safe as houses under the high bomb and he did yeah. a try saving in the corner. He, yeah. he was he, he was playing well. Is it wrong or is there too much pressure pouring him where fans thinking he's good? He's not, listen, he's not going to be an elite winger. He's not, he just isn't. He's a solid young kid who's come in who has been spoken to by the likes of Wellows and the other coaches and Christian Wolf when he was here. He made the team based on his efforts. Yeah, is effort enough to be a top class winger? Probably not. Um, but I've also seen calls for him to be moved to full back, um, uh, written on the wing, and uh, Wells being the halves. So uh, some fans seem to think written on the winger and Benison at full back is a, are a better option than Lewis Dodd as your number seven. And if Benison isn't quick enough to play on the wing, why do fans think he's quick enough to be a full back as well? 
Well, I think at the minute, just kind of going back to, to what I was saying about, about John, and, and I'm not making him a scapegoat because on Sunday, at least a dozen of them had absolute stinkers. At least a dozen of them had absolute stinkers. But there are errors creeping into his game, and I don't know whether it is time for him to be kind of taken out of that firing line. So if you put him at fullback, are you not just exacerbating the the, the issue there with him? Listen, I don't know. He might, he might really want to play and get it out of his system and have a game where he doesn't make any errors. And I'm just asking, is it time for him to be sat down? I'm not advocating either way. Do the errors come from trying to prove himself too much or... Or is it the outside noise of because he must hear it? He must yeah. he must see the comments every week when a squad is named and people are calling him for him to be dropped. Yeah. I'm, but, I'm not I'm not blaming the fans at all for wanting to see another player, but it's yeah. gotta be playing on your mind a little bit. Yeah. And as I say, before that Catalan game, he'd done nothing wrong. It, it, in my opinion, he'd done absolutely nothing wrong. So, yeah, I'm going to advocate not dropping a player who's in form. If errors creep in, if you start making mistakes like he has done the past two weeks, then you can start asking the questions. Should should he be sat down to protect him? Is it time for somebody else to have a go? And, again, we'll get on to the, the actual squad for Hull in a minute and, and why we're going to... why the changes have been made. But I thought this week would be great for T. Richard, but he's not even in the 21. I know fans want speed, but if it was just speed that made you a good rugby league winger, Dwayne Chambers would be playing for Castleford. Still. 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 I'll um, leave you now. Oh. So, I would argue some of the issues we've got with our attack are based on our outside backs, and it's not helped with Mark Percival missing quite a few games because he's a key a key part of your left hand side. Um it's not helped with Wonga Blake not being the player we thought or hoped he was going to be so far. Um it's not helped not having a top class winger in your in the team at this moment's time. And again, nothing against Tommy Makinson, but people calling for speed and calling for changes. But they also want Tommy, who's going to be 34 this year, to be offered a new two-year deal. How many 36-year-old wingers do you see in, in Super League? For me, if Tommy's got the option of going to Catalan, he's he's my all-time favourite winger at Saints. Best I've seen. Yeah. If he's got a chance to get a two-year deal at Catalan, you thank him for all his efforts at the club and you let him ride off into the sunset and have two years at Catalan to finish his career off. How many 36-year-old wingers are still doing it in Super League? And you can call, say, Ryan Hall, but Ryan Hall is a massive body as well who, yeah. who, who, who plays a different sort of game. I think it's fair to say Tommy's not going to go the length of the field anymore. Lethal lethal near the try line, but isn't going to trouble a defence from deep, is he, really? You, you, that's it, you... Yeah, unfortunately not. I'm, you know what? I, while while you've just been talking there, I've been listening in, and I've gone back to um, Saints versus Salford, a game that I missed. And you're on about that back line. So it was Makinson, Blake, Percival, Benison. Next match, Leeds Rhinos. Benison, Hurrell, Whitley, Blake. And I know Matautia might have switched in there as well. Benison, Hurrell, Matautia, Blake. Then Wigan. Makinson, Hurrell, Percival, Benison. It's there's no consistency, there's no continuity in it. Next one, Makinson, Hurrell, Metautia, Benison. There's no consistency there, and that is through obviously injuries coming. So Tommy getting a knock. You've got Percival's head knock. You've got Sione being played there. You've got Matt Whitley being played there. You've got Benison in and out. You've got Blake in and out. <sighs> It needs to be more settled. So when we are going out wide, those combinations know what each other are going to do. Because otherwise, is that a reason that we are stopping at the second row and we're not spreading the ball too far out wide? It's, it's got to is have it an effect. Reason? It's got to yeah. have an effect. 
and it's a lot and, of it is a lot of it is enforced not through choice, but because of, as you say, injury and suspension. So that's yeah. the back line. But we've equally got the same sort of problems with the forwards. Obviously, I think we're a prop short. But that, minute, we're a prop yeah. short because you've got Iggy Parsi out injured until June, who's under contract. So you can't just go and bring someone else in with the salary cap. Yeah. Iggy's going to come back and give us that second prop option on the bench. Unfortunately, we've had to make do essentially at times with one prop on the bench. I know Sione's now moved and playing in that role this season, but then potentially you're trying to shoehorn second rowers in. So when you bring James Bell on, at, and, I'm sorry, when you bring James Bell on at loose forward, you're then moving Morgan Knowles to have a stint at prop. So you again, you. Even in game, we're moving players round because that's what we've got to do at the moment. Because we can't do what you traditionally have and have two props starting and two props to replace them off the bench, and that's and you just spell them that way. Again, a lot of it is enforced by injury suspensions. I I, I think you spoke about it in the preview show prior to Warrington about how much Jake Wingfield would be a miss, and I think. We saw that on on Sunday, um, how much he's probably been integral because he's been doing some of that propping for us. Uh, we missed him at the weekend. We undoubtedly missed Matty Lees. If you've got Matty Lees and Wingfield on the bench on Sunday, you've got your go forward still. And I think we lost that a little bit in that. Well, after the... When the interchanges we made, we looked quicker, but we did we lack the grunt? The grunt. Yeah, that's... I suppose that's... That's the issue, isn't it? When when you're missing Parsi, who is going to come on, bring you someone who can start busting through tackles and making you meters and keeping that intensity up. When you go to a little bit of a, a lighter front row, yeah, you've got the mobility. You've still got the aggression. But yeah, are, are we one short? Are we almost like if George Delaney was a year older? Like if, he'd, if he would, if he'd been born a year earlier, so he'd have had his breakout season two years ago, then this was his next full season, then he was on, would we be in a better place? Same with like Noah Stevens and Brett Bailey, who's gone on loan to, to Whitehaven, would these be obviously a lot closer and have already played four, five, six games for us, already have tasted first team action so we can throw him in? It's it's tough. It's tough because it isn't like other sports. It isn't fancy rugby where you can just say, "I he's injured this week." Right, I'll get rid of him, and with the money that I've saved on him, I'll bring in him instead. It's not that you've got to deal with the hand you dealt, and you've almost at times you just got to wait for contracts to end. And it takes us straight back to your first point about this is a team that built a dynasty. And you don't get rid of main players while you're in the middle of that winning streak. Or equally, I think it's now going to take two, three years to turn over because we're saying where we where we lack and what we need. But I look at what's out there. I I almost yeah. think there's a, a there's not many players who will come in, especially in Super League, who 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 are available and could come in and improve our team. And I almost think Wigan have potentially looked at that situation and gone, do you know what? We've got a good nucleus for the next couple of years if we want to try and have a dynasty. And they've just locked down all their players. And they're going to basically, for the next few years, you will see very little turnover now in Wigan's squad. They've done their turnover because they were chasing us. Yeah. And it, it, it could be their turn. That said, all the issues that we've got, I think when they all combine and go wrong, you get Sunday. But equally, on their day, when our squad, or 80 or 90% of them, have an 8 out of 10 game, and they're playing well, you can pull off a good Friday. Of course you can. And you can, be, and you can beat anyone. So, we're, I'm going to move the screen on now, Kev. But yeah. I don't think all is lost. People are going, it's the end of the world. Um seen one post going, empty seats, crowd. I'm thinking, empty seats? It was the cup game and we got 11,500 or 12,000. When you look at the table, we're two points off the top. Catalan play whole KR at the weekend. All is not lost for me at all. I think 
we'll benefit from having those couple of week weekends off in the Challenge Cup now. Although I'd rather much rather be playing. Yeah. And I look at there, there's our next ten fixtures now. For me, eight out of ten of them need to be won. Um, Hull FC at home, Huddersfield at home, Castleway, Leeds at home, Catalan at home. I'm going to say we should be beaten at home. London away, Salford away, Cass at home, and then the two games in that run of ten games, which are hard games, Hull KR away, Wigan away. But the aim there should be at least eight wins out of ten. I think you, you've definitely got to look at winning your home games. As a club of tower statue, you've got to look at winning your home games. Um, obviously, Salford fans will watch this and say, well, we turned you over at home. So it might be the case there. But if we keep 13 on the park, then we should we should be more than a match for them. I think when you look at that league table, the only thing that obviously well jumps out at me is we're 40 or 50 points off where we probably should be in the point scoring. Um, and that's we, obviously, yeah. That there we go. Then that that's why that's that's my worry because that defensive column is unreal. And do you know what? And do you know we've not mentioned that as much as we struggle in attack and we've got issues. Sunday aside, which we'll just put down as an absolute stinker, they happen now and again. Unfortunately, has happened on the wrong day. Fifty-eight points in seven games, I think, is probably statistically. Potentially, the best Super League defence we've had. The only thing is, you've got to ally that with a good goal forward because you can't just rely on your defence to grind it out. But you've got, and and I think that's the issue. When we're in tight games, our defence will see us through. When we get into a situation like Sunday where we go two scores down. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, plan A's gone out the window of relying on the defence and we haven't got the plan B there. And that's what needs to change. Um, now, I, I look, I've looked at what got top spot in Super League over the last couple of seasons and it's roughly 42 points. So it's 21 wins. Um, six, 21 wins, six defeats get your top spot. Now, we need to be in the top two come the end of the year. You can probably afford seven, eight losses in total. If we could win eight out of the next 10, we would have 26 points after 50, after 17 games. And then you're okay. looking at another four out of your last, well, you'd have 26 after, maths here, Kevin, 26 after 17. And then you'd probably need to win seven out of your last 10. Yeah, which is two. which is standard for for being top two. Um, I'm not saying it's uh, yeah, that's that's the standard that that we're attaining or anything, but that's standard for top two, isn't it? That you're you're obviously winning 70, 80 percent of your games. That's that's just what happens. I'm still more than confident that that's doable for us. And then what you hope then is when you get into the playoffs, you've got to do what we said before and try and have your best team on the park. And 80 or 90% of them have to be performing at their best to get the results yeah. that we need. All is not lost. Think, Are we favourites? I'd say no, but it's not undoable. I think that's the thing. You, you gear up to um, you gear up to the playoffs these days. So as long as you're in the in the shootout for the playoffs, really that's that's the main thing. You, yeah, we want to be top two. But as long as you're in the in the playoffs. That, that guarantees that you you at least got a shot at, uh, at Old Trafford. You've got to be... What, what we can't have is we can't be finishing third or fourth and then having to go to somewhere like Catalan and yeah, expecting to get results. Yeah. Especially because they've, they've found their way of, of beating us over there. They've found a way to do it. So, for all the problems that we've said that we've got, there is positives. We're, yeah. we're not we're not far off. Listen, we're we're, we're competing. Yeah, look, there's you have a look at that table, and for years and years I've said um, you need a strong whole team. At the minute, that's KR, that's the east side. But if I was a Hull FC fan, over the the first seven rounds of Super League, you'd be more gutted 
if you were them than you should be if you're a Saints fan. Because you, you'd see yourself as a big club and you, you've won one. Probably two come weekend. So, you can look at the coaching, but I don't know people have called for talking about Paul Wellens, but you've got to look at what you've got on the park. And despite our inadequacies or deficiencies, what we've got, those players should have performed better. Yeah. I, I suppose that the, the question, I mean, I, I've, I've no one who I think, and this isn't like a, uh, well, who would you pick? But who's available coach-wise? Like, if 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 they got the wish, if if the, the, nays, the people who wanted rid of him got the wish, who would they want to come in? Because Christian Wolf isn't coming back. Justin Holbrook's not coming back. So who would it be? That that would be that's that would be my question. To get a conversation going with people, my question would be who? The, the, the other one I've seen, obviously, saying uh, Lewis Dodd's last chance of the weekend. And I'm like, but he's had a good start to the year. He's been much improved. He's looked more like himself. He had a stinker at the weekend, as you say, like a dozen others. Lewis Dodd is going to be the halfback at Saints for the next two and a half years. Guarantees. Because, I'm sorry, he ain't getting an NRL deal. Is he an NRL standard? Not for me. But he's got a contract in his favour at Saints. So, unless he gets a better offer, he is staying at Saints on the deal that we agreed to and a bit years ago, whether you like it or not. Um, at the end of the day, it's in his favour. So, yeah. unless he gets a better offer in Super League, he ain't going anywhere. So, you need to get behind him and support him. Yeah, right. And rants. It's I'm rant. <laughs> you do, yeah. but say I don't expect. What do you expect to Paying pretty much, he'll, he'll be on good money, won't he? Be on one of your stronger contracts in the squad. You're not sitting him in the stand for the next two and a half years. He's your halfback. You you're committed get, to what you've picked. I get the feeling that, like, as I said earlier, I'm not trying to be like a big fan, but I, I don't want people to fail at the club. I don't want any of them players to fail at the club. But you get the feeling that for some reason, well, I, no, I know what it is. It's it's validation on social media. People want others to fail so they can say, told you so. What's the point in that? I, but I, always, but think I, that, I always think people sometimes pick really wacky options about what they would do because they know it'll never get tried out. So you can continually claim, well, if it, if they did it my way, it'd work. Knowing full well that that theory's never going to get tested. Possibly, and listen, people are entitled to the opinion. We're just lucky enough that we get to broadcast it on this channel. Yeah, and you're also lucky enough if you don't agree with us to go in the comments and say you're talking crap. Yeah, and you can have that opinion about what we're saying. Yeah, and you know what? You get to give that opinion to. The four and a half thousand Warrington fans who watched our video at the weekend. <laughs> right, squad for the weekend, Kevin. Right, but Matt Percival is back in the squad, as is Matty Lees, and Sam Royal has been named in the 21 2. And missing out, Alex Wormsley, due to injury picked up at the weekend, uh, Jake Burns, and the aforementioned T. Ritson. Yes. And Matty Lees. Did you say Matty Lees? I said Matty Lees, yeah. No, Matty Lees, yeah, Matty Lees is in. So Percival's in, Matty Lees is in, Sam Royal's in. I'll do him again if you want. <laughs> no, it's all right. Right, <laughs> bold call, Kevin. Here's my bold call. Go on. I would have Noah Stevens on the bench of the weekends. Not because he's Red V's Noah Stevens, but if Alex Walmsley is going to be out four to six weeks due to the hamstring injury, then... You are one injury or one suspension to one of your props to needing Noah Stevens to actually play because you need him. I yeah. think this is a good opportunity this week where you've got Lees, you've got Delaney, you've still got Sione coming off the bench against what I'm going to call, I'm going to use the word again, crap pull FC side. This is a chance to blood him. I agree with you, to be honest. And again, it's not just because it's redv.net, it's Noah Stevens. 
Um, I, I think it's wise. And I, I almost think that's why we sent Brett Bailey, I've mentioned him again, um, meant, sent Brett Bailey off to Whitehaven. So he's getting actual game time. It's not a case because of... Is he because needs your, two props, your two prop injuries from needing Brett Bailey? Correct, yeah. And he's he's a big lad as well. He's absolutely huge. But you are, you're, you're a suspension and an injury away from needing these players to come in. And again, you, we know for me, you've all, you've almost got you've almost got to blood someone when you choose to, and you've got the right opportunity in the right game to do so, rather than being in a situation where who are we playing next week, Huddersfield or Hull. So, as if we got an injury against Hull or Huddersfield next week, and you suddenly need to give Noah his debut at Hull Kyar away, yeah, you give him chance to play twenty minutes on Friday against. I'm going to loosely say Super League opposition. You're going in on me, aren't you? <laughs> Leading that chin, Kev. Lead with that chin. I've learned my lessons. I, I think. I think this is this is the right time to do it. This is and whether again whether we sponsored him or not, this would be the right time to to bring him in. In my opinion, it gives you a chance to sit someone down for a week. And, and take them out of it. And I think the first one that you think of is Curtis Sirenen came off with an injury um, against Warrington. So you can give him a week and make sure that that's all sorted if you wanted to and get nowhere on the bench. Um, start with Whitley. Whitley. Yeah, start Whitley. No one on the bench. Um, and as you say, 20, 25 minutes um, and go out there and, and do what you've been doing for the reserves, what you've been doing for Swinton, what you've been doing... Um, through your, your age groups, go out there and enjoy yourself. Um, now I think the one thing with the squad, though, is a, a, another thing that I've seen across our social media and just say social media in general is people thought there would be more changes. Um, and, like, I was, I was... Yeah, well, I was considering, like, why this squad... And it's obviously, obviously Mark Percival and Matty Lee's coming back in. And it's interesting that Paul Wellers didn't, in his pre-match press, mention anyone. Because for the past couple of weeks, he keeps mentioning Ben Davis and not giving him a game. So I think he was very careful not to mention anyone, not to give anything away. But I think, even if we'd have got beat, I know we did get beat by Warrington, but if we'd have got beat in a close game, I think you'd have seen a couple more changes to the actual 17. But because we didn't see that, I don't think you could say, well, T. Ritson can come in for Tommy Makinson. Uh, ben Davis can come into the centres. And and you kind of do that little bit of a change. But I think because of the... It's down to the performance of last week that you... I'm not sure he can afford to do that much yes. with this squad. So, yeah, I, I fully agree. I think he's got to look at the team this week in the backs... Essentially, because as we've discussed, how we struggle in the attack. This is a chance for them. Whatever the whatever you plan on your team being for Huddersfield and Hulk are away, this is a time to try and get the attack right and practice against lower opposition, lower league opposition. If it had been, if it had finished thirty-one eight to Saints at weekend, then as I say, if it's it's to, yeah, Tom, Tommy, you can have a week off, mate. We don't need you this week. Um, Percy, you can even have an, Percy can have another week off, and then we'll get you back in Vodafone's field and get you back up to to speed. Anything like that, and you would see T. Ritson, you see Ben Davis, you might see Sam Royal coming in, and you can make them changes. You're afforded that, but just because of the performance, and as you say, you have a look at that squad that we've got there. There isn't too much you can you can do with it, really. Can I be bold again? Yep. I think the back line will be Jack Wells be at full back. Yeah. Wingers, Tommy Makinson. Yeah. And Wonga Blake. Yeah, I've I've literally written a team down here. No my two think, wingers. So yeah, I think it'll be what Wonga Blake outside of Percival. And yeah. I think Connie will be inside of Tommy Makinson. Do you know what? I I thought Connie made good yards at the weekend. And he, yeah. and uh, Kev Cunningham, we were talking to earlier, he also made the point is 
he helped the back, he helped the forwards out at the weekends making yards. Out of the yeah. backs we had on the field, I think Connie made the most yards. I'd, I'd, and I'm saying that based on what I watched and not necessarily based on stats. I'd have to look yeah. at the stats, but it appeared like Connie he was making meters after contact. Yeah. Um, and well, and I'm not sure the stats will, will be out there. I don't know if they've, they've put them out anywhere. So not, that'd, not, that'd be my outside backs. Then I'd have Lomax and Dodds in your halves. Um, Matty Lees, Daryl Clark, George Delaney, Matt Whitley, James ba- eh, James, Joe Batchelor, Morgan Knowles. I made that mistake last week. It is Joe. Yeah. On the bench, Moses and Bai. Noah Stevens, James Bell. I knew we missed there. Sioni, and Sioni. That is, and when I say that's what that's what I that's what I have. That's what I've got. That the team that I picked is the team that I think Paul Wellens will pick. The four missing out: Ben Davis, Sam yeah. Royal, yeah. Curtis Sirenen, yeah, and John Benison. Yeah, and I think. <laughs> Again, why do I think Paul Wellens will do that? I think it's because Wonga Blake is the Will Hopoati type role of this year, wearing number three, but getting picked in the team whenever. Because I know that, again, social media is rife with, with opinions about him. You need to give him the game time. You need to give him the, the chance Paul Wellens will think, think. Do I think it's slightly harsh on John Benson? Well, he's made errors, so yeah. I think if you've made errors, you can't complain about being dropped if that's what happens. Yeah. I almost think because Wonga wasn't picked for Wigan, wasn't picked for yeah. Catalan, and then yeah. you brought him back in. If you are now to drop him again, you're basically just writing off the project or the, the, yeah, the signing because you can't yeah, then yeah. bring him in next week or the week after. He's he needs chance to play in whatever you think is going to be your back line. And I think Wellsby, Makinson, um, Harrell, Percival and Blake, in Paul Wellens' mind, is probably our best option. Yeah. And how yeah, many times, uh, uh, how many times yeah. have we seen that back line this year? Have we? Uh, oh, have we? Good, good well, question. Because he didn't play... Harrell didn't play against Huddersfield, did he? No. Venice and Harrell, no. I'm just going, I'm going back through the teams. But yeah, I, I think it is it's slightly harsh on on uh, John Benison. But again, as we say, he's made he's made errors, so you can't really complain about it. If even if, as I say, if we'd have won or got beat by still putting a good enough performance in, he could have been the one dropping out for T. Rickton as well. If T. Ritson was um if T. Ritson was in that twenty one. Um has, has John Benson played every game this season. I think he might have, you know. In that case, then in that case. No, yeah. we've seen it once. First game of the season against London, at least once. Wellsby making St. Hurrell, Percival, Blake. And how many points did we score, Kev? Forty. Yeah. And then Benison played against Huddersfield the week after. And has been in the team since. So I would suspect that's what he started the year with and what he wanted to go with until injuries and everything else came in. So yeah. he's going to go back to that, that back line, I think. Yeah, I think that's what he will do. I've seen people criticise and, and again, opinion going on about... Paul Wellens' team selections. He's pretty much been picking what we have each week. And listen, some of that might be obviously us second guessing what we think Wellow is going to do, but it's not too far off, as you say, when you go on patterns and yeah. and re and when you actually look at reasons why and not just chucking four players out the team and putting four in for the sake of it. Yeah, I think that's that's what we've said over the past seven years. Well, probably not the past seven, but we look at patterns. We look at patterns of what we think is going to be done. Do we agree with them all? No, not necessarily. But I think this week he's he's going to go with his strongest team that he's got available, with possibly the exception of keeping 
and I've I picked Sheridan just because he, he came off um, with injury. And you can just rest that up and give Noah that run out. So probably his strongest 16 that he's got in his head available, plus Noah to make sure he gets a good 20, 30 minute run out. It's getting longer by the longer this uh, video goes on, by the way. Equally, though, I would always like to see that extra prop on the bench. Or at least one, well, at least one out and out prop on the bench because Sioni's a hybrid, isn't he? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So if Wingfield or Walmsley becomes well, well Wingfield or Walmsley come back available, I'd like to see two proper props on the bench and potentially yeah, and potentially look at Siren and Whitley and Batchelor and say, you know what? There's two spots there for the three of you. Fight it out between yourselves. Yeah. Well, not literally, but yeah. Right. Pull FC squad, Kev. <laughs> Yeah, Hull FC squad, I've actually got a screen up here because um, last time we played a team like this, I feel it was Huddersfield uh, in a possibly like a four or an eight-all draw that we said was one of the worst performances we'd ever seen and it wasn't long after we'd started this. And I, I think I said something like, um, we've, been, we've drawn or whatever against a team that looked like lottery numbers. Uh, anyway, Simon Griggs is in charge of Hull at the minute, um, since I'm getting rid of Tony Smith. He's made four changes to the squad. Danny Houghton returns from a rib injury, while Denise Baumforth, Maka Harmon, Jalen Hodgson are also included. The quartet replaced the suspended uh, Liji Sal, Jack Brown, while Tex Hoy and Fermanu Brown have departed the club, thanks to Hull FC's website. Right, I've seen some Saints fans on social media thinking we're going to get beat this week. I've just said it tongue in cheek about ten minutes ago. If not we a get chance. Beat by, not not a if, chance. If we get beat by this team, and I know they're all going to be fighting for, and and there might be that that kind of bounce from getting rid of the coach. We get beat by this team, then I I fully want a completely different seventeen. Next yeah. week against Huddersfield, I'd rather there's, throw the kids in. Yeah, there's n not a chance in hell that team should be anywhere close to us. But equally, are we on a hiding to nothing this week? Um, yes. If we win by forty, or win by fifty, fans will go. That's what we played. That's what we expected it. If we only win by twenty or ten to twenty, fans are gonna be saying the attack's still off. We should have put forty on them. And they're not going to be happy. If we win by less than 10, it'll feel like a defeat for many fans. But going back to the fixtures, we've just got to get structures right and keep the points ticking over. I think you're absolutely right that whatever result this is, it's either a, we should have, so we should have beaten by 40, or we should have because we should have beaten by more. And that, that's what you're getting. If we lose, Kev, pitchforks yeah. are coming out from us. Why are you gonna why are you getting on the pitch and helping them out? Um I think with the state of our pitch at times you could do all the help they could get. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's I, the weather, it's not we've not had two dry days since last August. Um I think the, the bigger picture for this is we need to start getting them attacking structures right. But we need to get them right because we need to get them right for Huddersfield. We need to get them right for Hull KR. We need to get them right for Cass, for Leeds, for Catalan, for London, for Salford, for Castleford, for Wigan. Not just we need to get them right for Hull. We need to get them right to take us through the season. This needs to be step one, two to get that right. Yeah. If I think... The issue is if it's we need to be, and again we said this in the um, instant reaction, we need to be clinical. We need to be clinical. That's it. Not have a managed, as I said, twenty four nil up at, on seventy two minutes. Concede two late tries. Oh, it's all right. It was never in doubt. I want it to be worth my season ticket money. I want to see us be winning this game. 30 to 40 points. Yeah. Right. Prediction, Kev. So, I'll go Saints by 36. I'll go Saints by 32 then. 
Um, I, I think as well, if you're winning by that much, it means you can leave Noah Stevens on if he gets in. It means that if you do blood someone, you can leave them on. Um, and you can you can kind of get that sharpness into him by saying, yeah, we know that you look like Alex Walmsley when he first started and you're nearly coughing up a lung. But it's good for you. You'll be better for it yeah. next week. And, it, and then it's no, it, if, if it is no one who gets the chance, it would then be his job to try and put an element of doubt into Wellow's mind about whether he would be in the squad next week or not. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, right. The women are much better than the men. <laughs> it's always been the way, Kev. Let's just admit it. Um, <laughs> and they can make a semi, but we can't. Uh, they, they can also make a final as well, but we can't. <laughs> Um, the women's team will take on York Valkyrie on the 18th of May at the Keep Mode Stadium in Doncaster. Um, after a 74 0 victory over the Giants at the weekend, I went down to Crusader Park. Um, absolutely phenomenal performance. Can and the the, the, the issue Matty Smith has got, he's left five or six women out of that team who would walk into pretty much every other team in the women's super league. Um, the such the strength in depth, um, and then I was watching that afterwards, and you see all the the junior teams girls coming onto the field. Some of them were playing. I think a game for Fatu Reef afterwards watching, and you think the pipeline of women that we, and girls we have got playing rugby league in this town. This team is going to keep getting better and better and better. And great work from Saints. Great work from the community clubs. Um, but do you know what? They were an absolute joy to watch on Sunday. Uh, yeah, good. It sounds from from the bits you were telling me, um, it sounded exactly that. Tough game against York, though. Um, again, one of the the big hitters. Um, so that's obviously not a gimme when you get to this this point, though. You're two games away from from glory, aren't you? And yes. I wouldn't necessarily back against the the women's team from doing it because, as you say, they've got five or six to come back in. The strength in depth is absolutely phenomenal. And, yeah, I think the great thing is they are spearheading that, aren't they? Like, with all the junior teams, with all the community clubs, the girls, they're accessible. So you've got the young girls being able to go and watch them at Thato Heath. It'd be great if they're on at the stadium. But they can go and see them at Thato What's that? They've got that pathway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They've got they they can go and actually see the girls, actually speak to them, and they know that there's a route up. So that that's that's one of the absolutely phenomenal things about the the women's game in this town, um, specifically as well. Yeah, I know we I, t- I tweeted it at the weekend. Um, I know you say it'd be great if they're on the stadium, Crusader Park. What a pitch that is! Unbelievably good. Um, so lucky in this town that the club have got a facility outside of the stadium where they can play games, whether the women's games or reserves have played there this year, um, available to them. Um, really great setup down at Fatto Heath, um, something to be really proud of in this town. Um, and a, a really nice little venue as well. Um, great for rugby league. Right, Kev, I'm going to mention the semi final. Um, the game against York is at Doncaster before the men's semi-final where Wigan are playing. And the Wigan women's team are playing at Saints before the Warrington semi-final. And you think, I can understand they want to talk about neutral venues, but it wasn't an issue last year when Wigan had to play Leeds at Leeds. So so why is it all of a sudden a problem this year? All they're doing is essentially preventing the women's game, getting the crowd in that they deserve. Because if, if Wigan had played at Doncaster before their semi, they'd have got a, a good couple of thousand Wigan fans getting in early to watch their women's team and cheer them on. I'm sorry, but Wigan and Hulk IR fans aren't getting into the stadium early to watch Saints versus uh, York. And equally, you're not going to get Warrington and, um, and Huddersfield fans coming to the um, Totally Wicked early to watch Wigan against help me out. Leeds. 
no, I'm just leaving. I'm just leaving. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's it, it's mind-boggling. If you want to get eyes on the women's game and get them the crowd to deserve, make it easy for people. And so for two cup games, it's not even like it's a league game and a cup game, and one is organised by a Super League board, we'll say, and one's organised by the RFL. It's the same competition, in effect, just the women's and the men's version. It just beggars belief. It genuinely beggars belief. Yeah. And Doncaster at quarter past 11 in the morning. It, 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 it's sad. It's really sad to see. Um, if you want to have these double headers, don't put the women women's game as an afterthought. Just, yeah. oh, that'll do. They can do that. It, they, deserve, they deserve better. They deserve a better crowd. Um, and sadly, they're going to not get it. The, yeah, I think both sure. semi-finals are going to be have a few supporters from either side who, who do travel, but essentially they're going to be playing in front of an empty stadium, and that's wrong, really wrong. And it's not what the women deserve, whether they're from uh, Leeds, York, Wigan, or our Saints. It's not what they deserve. Yeah. Right. Have you got it all off your chest, Kevin? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think so. Right. We'll be celebrating on Friday night. Don't be worried. Don't forget <laughs> to like, share and subscribe. See, I'm ending it tonight, Kev. You've had your chance this week. Catch you soon. I'll stop it before the end of the recording and lose it all. <laughs>